as Britain swelters on the hottest day of the year so far, there are warnings to look out for those who might be affected by the heat. The absolute consensus is that, that human action is leading to an increase in average temperatures. People are walking miles to safety through what officials say are the worst floods for a century. Close to a thousand people have been killed in the current rainy season, and there are more downpours to come. So hurricanes traditionally are weather, they're a weather pattern. There's a really simple relationship between the weather and Earth's temperature. As the atmosphere warms, the ocean warms. As the ocean warms, we get more evaporation, and that just produces more vigorous overturning of uh, moisture in the air. That drives more frequent and more intense storms. The Amazon, which helps to slow down the pace of global warming, has seen more than 80,000 fires break out so far this year. Right now, there are close to 2,000 burning in the region. My name's Andy Shepard. I work for the European Space Agency, and I use satellites to look at Earth's polar ice. 2019 has been quite a bad year for Earth's ice. We've seen record reductions in the amount of sea ice floating on the ocean surface that have outstripped all of the gains that have happened over the past 30 years in just two or three years' time. In Greenland, we've seen record melting across the ice sheet this summer, and it's likely to be the highest melt year in the past 30 or 40 years. What do we do? Pushing for changes through whatever means necessary is the most important thing that young people can and should be doing right now. People need to stop denying the fact that it is a problem and they need to actually realise that it is the main problem. No other problems matter if we don't have a planet to have problems in. With no resistance there's no change and without everyone being here today nothing's going to change. The government can't see that people care and if no one stands up for what they believe in, then nothing's going to happen. A lot of young people at the strikes have been coming to talk to me and my colleagues about climate change and what it means for them, and there is a lot of genuine interest there and a lot of genuine concern. It's a great opportunity for people to like express their opinions and their political values, but like not in a, an aggressive way, but in a peaceful way. Anyone who tells you your voice is too small, tell them to shut up. Yes. I've worked in climate science for probably 20 or 30 years now, and I can absolutely say that I haven't seen a more active uh, audience in all of the time that I've worked than we've seen over the past year. So uh, the youth climate strikes are a really powerful movement and uh, they certainly have had an impact. So my name is Marta Bautuszewicz and my main research area is uh, household energy footprints. So I'm basically trying to uh, find out how much energy households are using. When I attended the youth strikes, people were really passionate and one thing which I really noticed is that every time when I attend those strikes, I have to take a few minutes to compose myself because I just want to cry. Because looking on all the young people and on their placards and like saying like I have no future or there is no planet B and seeing that these are young kids and this is their future that we're talking about. This is a future that we're actually fighting for. It just, it just makes me so <laughs> emotional and just want to cry. It has a huge effect when you're confronted with people that are affected. And when, you, when you're a mother, when you're a father, when you're a grandfather, it hits kind of different buttons. We need to use less plastic and make less pollution. And try to do something to make our cars be powered not by pollution and not by anything else. 
the action of of doing that, of going and striking, has a massive impact. It's getting to the point where I'm thinking very hard about whether I want to have children, not because of anything personal, but because they might not have a future to look forward to. Um, so it's something that's very close to my heart, really. What young people can do? Well, first of all, they can learn about their footprint and they can learn about what kind of activities that they do uh, contribute the most to their carbon footprint. Because knowledge is, is, is a key here. So one of the big actions they can do is to actually talk to their parents. So once they learn about, oh my goodness, this is, this is my footprint, this is my family's footprint, they can, they, they can actually have a real impact by talking to parents. It's, it's surprising how much change you can do just by talking to people and making them more aware. I think majority of parents would at least listen and try to understand that this is their children's future that they that they actually jeopardizing. I just think you know, talk to your friends, talk to your family. You know, if they're people you care about and if they care about you, they'll listen. And that's, you know, how the ripple effect starts. That's how the domino effect starts. Hey, thank you so much for watching this documentary. It literally means the world. Um, it's making so much difference that you're sharing, liking, commenting on this video to make sure that the most amount of people can see this as possible. If you know anyone else who would want to see this video or you want to do your part and share it with anyone, feel free. I'm going to be making more climate science content like this because I'm not going to shut up about it because I think it's so, so important right now, more than ever, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.